Yeah. Ooh, more cutscenes. Those are some really nice bangles you got there, Kadalka. What? What is it? You that? need to shave, Edward. That is a coffin. Um. Um. Back up, people. Back up, people. Oh, it opened it. They opened it. Is that just a mummy? Cross your fingers. Oh, that's, that's more than a mummy. Trust me. Holy savior! <laughs> the secret of the Fomors from the bottom of the sea. Emigre! Hi, Roger. I remember you. You're adorable and kind of crazy. Hi, Roger. By the way, that is a man named Roger Bacon. Roger Bacon's pretty badass. Did you say immigrate document? What do you know about the immigrate document? Where is it? Answer me! Immigrate document? Is that what you've been looking for? Hey, you crotchety old fart! <laughs> I am sick of this! You don't want to talk? Fine. I'll slit your holy throat and leave your body for the rats. Hey, Edward. Edward. Calm your tits. I have no choice. Here it is. I'm on instructions direct from the Vatican. There is a manuscript. It's said to be somewhere in the building. And that manuscript is? Right. It's called the Immigrate Document. Is it very important? For hundreds oh, of music. years, it was kept deep inside the Vatican Library. No one was allowed to read it. In fact, many people thought it didn't even exist. That's weird. So why is it here now? Somebody stole it. Stolen? From the Vatican? Right. No way. Not many people could steal a thing like that from the Vatican. You really have to know the place, or have enough money. According to our secret investigation, however, the wealthy gentleman who purchased this monastery bribed someone within the Vatican to steal the immigrate document for him. Wealthy gentleman? Yes. Patrick Hayworth. My friend. So you knew him. But it's not like it was priceless art or something. Why would he be interested in a thing like that? For years, Patrick has dabbled in mysticism and alchemy. He's on the brink of crossing the line, playing God. Playing God? Creating life, Edward. It's thought that the ancient druids forbidden secrets on eternal life and resurrecting the dead are contained in the immigrate document. I can't believe that. Of course, it's just silly superstition. That's why I'm here, to try to convince Patrick to drop his dangerous experiments and return the immigrate document to the Vatican. Wow. You'd never guess that a lunatic like that was living here by looking at the place. <laughs> According to the caretakers... S sarcasm is like becoming of you, temple. Edward. They said that? Yes, they're terrified. With all the crazy things going on around here now, they haven't even seen Patrick, yet they feel indebted to him. They've asked me here to see if I can save him. So that's your story. So I guess that's why they didn't oh, try no. killing James. One more mystery that needs unraveling. Yep. How about Roger? Hey, Roger. You gonna actually wake up, dude? No? Okay. Roger. Wake the fuck up. Fine. Do I remember this? Ah, oh, there's the last glass part. Okay. What's back here? Oh, another door. Oh, I know. That's the way I came. <laughs> I guess Roger really doesn't want to wake up. Um. Is there anything even over here? No? No? Okay. I'll leave you to your rest, Roger. Ah, uh, shut up. Stupid music box. I remember some things about that glass wall. So we're probably going to be running back here in a minute. Blah, blah, blah. Another blah, blah, blah. 
And there's the last one. And the door next room unlocks. Yep. Those are the Greek letters that we need to open up that case back here. We're gonna go do that. Now, that is entirely an optional thing to do, but it makes the scene later in the game so much better and gives one of the characters such a better ending. Now, note they said character ending, I didn't say the ending of the game. God damn it. There we go. I keep getting into a fight in that s the exact same spot. I should probably stop walking there. Is a baby! Someone needs to stop feeding that baby. Now let's try a tornado. Mix things up a bit. You have been hammered! Go, 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 go! And baby's dead. Sorry, baby. You did. Breaking in all the levels. Um, there we go. Has Edward gained a level lately? Yes, he has. Okay. He's just a little bit behind in experience to the others. Come on, Kadelka, go up there. If I remember correctly, the uh, thing was up here. Right? Yes! It's locked. You align the Greek letters match what we saw in the stained glass mural. After you match up the five Greek letters, the lock opens. Find a sheet of letters in red box. The box says happy birthday written on it and holds a corsage of dried flowers that crumble when you touch them. The letters are signed Sophia de Lotta. Well, you pick up the item. You got Sophia's letter. Now, who's Sophia, I wonder? We have not heard anything of a Sophia. Uh, oh, that's not the read. There we go. Okay. Sophia's letter. Letter one. My dearest daughter, Charlotte. Charlotte? Well then, it looks like we found that mother that was mentioned earlier. As I sit in silence juggling to write this letter to you in English, I sense the arrival of winter is near at Arden Castle. I feel it makes me a bad mother since I'm unable to make you happy. I cannot lament how my selfish affair has entangled so many people, including you, my dear, who were sent to Wales to encounter many sorrowful experiences. I will probably never see you, nor your brother, nor your sister again. Oh, there's the brother and sister. But one thing will not change is that you are my beloved daughter. You are the daughter of the man whom I love from the bottom of my heart, Philip Christopher. I'm sure you resemble him greatly. You were blessed when you were born, and the fact that you are still alive is a testament to that fact. I often wonder what color your eyes but uh, what the color of your eyes is, and how I would feel to run my hands through your hair. That's kinda of pedophilic of you, honey. I can't help but to dream about the day I meet you. Although deep down inside, I know that day will never come. We might be in a far away in distance, but we'll always be together in my heart. Please take good care of yourself. Your mother, Sophia Delata. Letter 2. My dearest daughter Charlotte, five summers have already passed since you entered this world. I think I must have written over twenty letters now. Despite my poor penmanship, how happy it makes me to know my feelings are being conveyed to you. I wonder how I should tell you today. I think I will talk about your father. Your father, Christopher Philip, is the son of the Count von Konismark, Sweden's, Sweden's Artillery Inspector General. Your father was a childhood friend of mine, and I am the daughter of a duke. Unfortunately, Philip and I eventually had to part. Due to the inevitable circumstances of our country, an arrangement was made so that I was to marry and be queen to, 
to Count Hanover and spend my days filled and spend days filled with hardship. It was your father who came into my life again and saved me. Your father and I spent many years loving each other. It's a fact that I fell in love with somebody, although I was already married. Some call that a secretive affair, but our love was genuine and pure, especially when compared with the marriage arrangement with Count Hanover, which was stained with politics and power. Please forgive your foolish mother. Your mother, Sophia de Lada. Letter three. My dearest daughter, Charlotte. Please allow me to celebrate your twelfth birth... Oh, dear. Charlotte says she was killed when she was nine. Mm. May God's blessings and grace be with you. What would you like for your birthday? Would you like a raspberry cake? I should like to get you a beautiful dress along with a golden hair ornament and brooch. I want to braid happiness into each loop of your hair. Then you could dance in the court like a precious jewel. My dear Charlotte, are you well? I hope you haven't become sick. It's a little bit more than sick. I only wish to make you happy, even if I have to sacrifice my own life. Is that a wish that cannot be granted? I would like very much to get to know you, even if it's only a glance. I want to see how you've grown up. There isn't a day that goes by that I do not pray for your well-being. I try not to lament, but I love you from the bottom of my heart. Your mother, Sophia Delotta. Aww. And Charlotte probably has absolutely no idea because those letters were locked up and she never saw them. I guess we'll have to find Charlotte and give her the letters. Now we need to go into the church. Church, church, church. I think we're nearing the end of disc three. We're either nearing the end or we're pretty much at the end. <laughs> All right, so we've got a skeleton and a bat. Or a raven, I guess. Hey, Mr. Skeleton, dude. I'm gonna hit you with a geyser. Have a geyser. Tee! Oh, damn it. Oh, well, get your heel on, James. There's nothing that will make me unhappy. Because that is such a beautiful damage that she does. So beautiful. The way Edward moves during fights almost looks like he's dancing. His little jumpy movements when he doesn't have any weapons in his hand. He's actually going in time with the music, I swear. Okay then, have a geyser. Seeing as you're gonna be like that. Mm. And now you're dead. So very, very dead. Goodbye. Yay! Your intelligence. You so dumb. Uh, you know what? I'm sick of him getting wrecked by magic. Stained glass room. I think it opened this? No? Oh, it probably opened the door uh, out here, now that I think about it. Might as well save.
Okay, time to open the door of the church.